Welcome to the Taking Your Solutions to the Next Level webinar. My name is Channa Wald and I will be your moderator today. Before we get started, please note that we'll be answering questions throughout the webinar in the chat window located in the bottom left corner of your screen. Please feel free to chat your questions at any time. The materials from today's webinar will be available online soon. As registrants, you will receive an email linking you directly to the materials. Your presenter today will be Marlene Martineau. Marlene has worked at Newdon Technologies for more than seven years as the Marketing and Strategic Relations Manager. She is considered an industry expert on data integration, performance measures, and CGIS solutions. Marlene is actively involved in the justice industry and currently serves as the Forum for the Advancement of Court Technology Chair and the IGES Court Advisory Committee Chair. Let's get started. Marlene? Thanks for that introduction. I could um, go on and on about the benefits of a quality case management solution, and I'm sure each of you on the phone today can uh, could add your own list to what I would want to talk about. But today we're going to talk about, instead of focusing on case management itself, we're going to talk a little bit about how reaching beyond your basic case management benefits can provide additional efficiencies and cost savings. So let's get started. The picture on the slide might be a familiar sight to some of you. Um, some of you may look at it and just not have a clue what it is. It's an image of a, pot of a building from a popular game on Facebook called Farmville. So how many of you have ever heard of Farmville? Um, unless you've been living in a home for the past couple of years, chances are you've played it known someone who has played Farmville, heard about it in the news, um, specifically in reference to the Zynga IPO, or have seen notices on your Facebook feed. It's, it is really one of the most popular games on Facebook right now. And um, the way Farmville provides new buildings is a good analogy for what I'm trying to illustrate today as I talk about expanding beyond your basic case management functionality. And yes, I am providing this analogy from experience. I will admit that I have played Farmville in the past. Uh, well, let's get on to what, why I'm talking about these buildings. So this is, um, this is how you use buildings on Farmville. First, you start with the foundation, and then you ask for materials. What's really interesting about building uh, structures in Farmville is you always have to depend on your neighbors to get you enough of the correct materials to finish the building. So it's not something that you can do yourself. You have to request or um, request materials and help from your neighbors. When you're talking about a case management solution, it seems like that's it's always a team effort to get it to get it created and to get it into the format that you would like to see. So once you've created once you um, have all of the uh, materials that you need, you now have a completed house. Uh, for this example, I'm using pictures of a haunted house that's available on, frame, on Facebook, on Farmville only during the month of October, which is why you see kind of these missing shingles and weeds and things like that. I didn't select this image because um, of the reference to the holes that a case management solution might have. Um, quite the opposite, uh, in fact. In Farmville, this house is complete. Um, it is a haunted house, so it is supposed to look a little rustic and old. Uh, but this house is complete, and you can start using it um, to collect, re to start receiving rewards. Um, at this point, the way buildings work in Farm Farmville is um, you actually get something from them once you build them. Um, in this case, because it's a haunted house and it's, it's around Halloween, you actually get pieces of candy to fill your trick-or-treat button bucket that you can turn in for Halloween-based, uh, Halloween-themed um, decorations. So at this point, you have a fully functional haunted house. It might not be the biggest and scariest haunted house on Farmville, but you still can enjoy the rewards. So every time you harvest this building, you get one piece of candy to put into your trick-or-treat button. Uh, bucket. The case management solution by itself is fully functional and you can realize many of the rewards in just using that system. It 
took a lot of effort to get here and it's well worth it and you're fully functional and things seem to be going good. But if you had a chance to get a bigger house and even more rewards, would you? So once again, with the help of your neighbors, you ask for more materials. And you get to build a bigger house. Now, it's a little bit harder. Um, instead of five pieces of each of the building materials that you need, now you need ten pieces of these building materials. So it takes a little bit more work, uh, but uh, you do end up with a bigger haunted house. And now instead of one piece of candy, you now get five pieces of candy to fill your trick-or-treat bucket. So your return on investment is even greater. And it's, it's not, it didn't just double your rewards. It made a substantial, significant difference to the rewards that you receive. So as you look at beyonding uh, your case management solution, you find ways to realize, you can find ways to realize even greater rewards um, than just the case management solution alone. So the easiest place to look, and it may not seem easy to begin with, but it really is, um, is to look internally. So how can you share information internally to become more efficient, and what processes can be automated? So you're looking at this, look at different divisions um, in your court or agency. How can you send them information electronically instead of uh, paper-based? Are there ways that you can create electronic files instead of paper files? How do you save, uh, save all of the documents in an electronic filing cabinet instead of in a paper file? Um, can you do some scanning? Can you do other things? So how can you look a little bit beyond just tracking your events, tracking um, statuses, uh, and storing some documents? How do you look beyond that into sharing this information and automating your processes? This is how you start really expanding beyond the core functionality of a case management solution. Um, really uh, taking a look at your business processes and how they can be improved. So are you loving this house yet? Yeah, it looks pretty cool. Um, we're enjoying the, cre the increased rewards. But what if you found out that you could get something even bigger? What if you found out you could get 10 pieces of candy instead of five? That's pretty big. You can fill your bucket pretty fast um, with 10 pieces of candy every time you harvested this building. So now we're talking. Now you have the biggest and scariest haunted house on Farmville. You have reached your full potential. Um, you're filling our, your trick-or-treat bucket faster. You're getting bigger and better rewards. You're able to turn it in and decorate your entire farm with these Halloween-themed decorations that you can get from the candy that you get from this haunted house. So this is definitely the hardest level to reach um, instead of like 10 pieces of material, uh, 10 of each of the materials that you need to build the house. You need something like 25. So it takes a very concerted effort, and it takes a lot of work with your neighbors to get all of those necessary materials. It takes some time. It takes some patience. Um, but but you, it is uh, something that you can reach towards and get there. So this is a really good analogy as to looking externally looking um, beyond your court or agency, and how can you reach out to other courts and uh, justice partners and public safety partners and other um, agencies that support you or you support them? How do you look externally? Uh, and that does definitely, just like building the highest level of this haunted house, it takes the most effort, um, but it also gives you the biggest reward. So. The things to look at when you start talking about externally is um, if you can transfer information electronically instead of by paper carrier or fax, um, say to the court, say uh, receiving that information from the police departments, a big uh, way to immediately cut down on some data entry would be to receive information from law enforcement, either from e-ticketing or some of the other options that they have. Um, uh, data exchanges, all of these are, are really amazing op uh, opportunities for you to increase the rewards for, um, and expand really past your case management solutions. 
Um, so what other agencies can you share information with? Uh, I mentioned uh, local law enforcement, but what about courts? What about the prosecutor's office, the probation department? What about corrections? Um, what about state and federal agencies like the Department of Motor Vehicles, Disposition Reporting, or the state FBI, uh, state FBI reporting? Um, what about your public? Uh, if you could share ticket information, court dates, payment information, payment due dates, and other common information via the phone um, or the web to uh, decrease the number of phone calls that you actually have to answer every day or the line at your information window, would that be worth it? Um, there, uh, there are many, many different options for expanding externally. I've just really, uh, just really quickly listed a few. And there's no limit to how you can expand and increase the efficiency of your quarter agency. It really just comes down to looking at your, uh, looking at the checking uh, with your neighbors, um, if you will, uh, finding out what's available, and putting some of the things in place. There really is no limit. It really just comes down to what can you agree on and how can you get these things in place. So. Um, the options for expanding beyond the core functionality of your case management solution are as individual as the agencies using them. They really can be, um, what you do may be completely different than the quarter agency uh, across the street or across the county or across the state or across the nation. They really can be just, it really, you need to really focus on your functionality and what your needs are and build them out to meet those needs. And that's why all of these options are so individual. So here to talk to me about how the city of Spokane, Washington has started looking beyond their case management solution um, is Jim Bledsoe. Bledsoe. He's the assistant prosecuting attorney and the head just where administrator. And Jim, if you can just give us a quick overview, um, introduction to who you are and uh, what is happening in the city of Spokane. Well, thank you, Marlene. Um, I'm Jim Bledsoe. I'm an assistant city attorney with the city of Spokane. I uh, used to be a prosecutor for about nine years, uh, finishing that stint with being the actual city prosecutor. I subsequently moved into the civil division and sort of running uh, several automation programs. I did bring JustWare online for not only the prosecution department, but the probation department and the public defender. Uh, we did that in 2009, basically got started right after the first of the year, went live on March 11th, and about 100 days later, the prosecution went paperless. So that's who I am and sort of the system we have in Spokane right now. Okay, thank you. This month, um, we are talking about how to take a case management solution and expand past just the actual functionality within, with, within what happens within a case management solution. So um, the city of Spokane opted to, to set things up into a separate database, even though you're using the same, the same solution for, for these different offices. Can you talk to us a little bit about why you made that decision and, and how that uh, works? Sure. Um, we set up separate databases because we wanted to take a system approach. I know uh, many of your users and potential users are envisioning a, a single agency, like a prosecutor agency or a public defender probation, whatever, uh, buying the application and, and using it to handle their case files. And while that certainly would save that particular agency a lot of time, uh, coordination and and what all um, within the agency, we wanted to take a system approach where we uh, got our probation, public defender, and prosecutor departments all in a joint system. Uh, at the time, our court was a department of our county's district court, and that wasn't going to be possible to get them on the system at that time. Uh, so we opted for the next next best thing and did the, the three departments. Um, basically, uh, the same information is 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 uh, added uh, just once. I was going to say the same information. Information is added once, 
and is shared between the separate databases between the three agencies. Um, there's, there was a, a step with regard to economy and putting the probation and the prosecution department on the same database, uh, and then a step recognizing the security that the public defender wanted for all of the stuff that they would have in defending their clients. So they had their own database. Uh, and then we have a what's called a justice uh, broker. We call it locally the broker, which uh, passes that information back and forth uh, as necessary between the two databases. The end object here is to you know put it in once and then share it and each agency who has their own interest in a case, obviously prosecution and prosecuting it, uh, the probation and monitoring compliance, both pre and post adjudication, and the public defender in those cases in which they are the defense agency, um, <clears throat> they wanted to be able to put you know, their input into it as well. You know, give us their, their defense counsel or their discovery demands electronically, receive the responses electronically, uh, that sort of thing. So, uh, in order to get this to work on a system level, it was necessary to have the separate databases and the connector between uh, the two databases. So when you talk about sharing all this information, what exactly is being exchanged? Uh, you talked a little bit about the basic name information and, and possibly some case information. But what is actually going back and forth and um, how often does that occur? Well, we, um, we share what I would like to call pro forma data, uh, basically uh, all of the name and name information, with some exceptions. Obviously, the, the public defender doesn't want to give us the address that their client really lives at. Uh, but we share uh, most all name information and most all case information, uh, be that you know charge, data charge, uh, where the charge took place, um, court dates associated with the charge, judgments associated with the charge, sentence, conditions. Uh, if there is a data field that just where it collects, and we don't even begin to use probably about three quarters of the entire system, I would say if, if what we do use is 100%, we exchange probably on the level of 95% of that information. Uh, we don't include the notes of the various agency uh, participants, like if there's a, like a pretrial conference and the prosecutor would write some note. That is not shared uh, with the public defender, isn't shared with probation. But the actual event is, and uh, certainly anything that you could go to the clerk's window at the court and pick up the court file and read uh, you know, over the counter, that information is, is all being passed back and forth. Uh, between the three agencies. Now, um, when are we doing it? We're doing it all the time. And it, it's not in real time, but it's about the next best thing. Uh, if we're uh, passing an entire case uh, with all of the information that just where it contains about that case, uh, it goes over uh, certainly in no more than a minute and in most cases, well short of that, it, it sort of depends upon how busy the system really is. If we've got all three courtrooms going and, you know, everybody on, on their systems and stuff's flying all around, it takes a little bit longer, but typically it's quite fast. If we're passing just uh, a couple, three data fields, oh, it's just a matter of seconds. Uh, and uh, we do that, uh, obviously, with, with real good hardware. The, the software supports it, but you, you have to have a, a, a strong, you know, hardware system plumbing-wise uh, to get this to happen. But um, with regard to, you know, what are we exchanging? Uh, pretty much everything uh, except um, work product and strategies, that sort of thing. Uh, when are we doing it? Uh, from the time uh, the user hits save, until that, if it's a piece of shared information, from the time the user hits save until that hits the other system, um, golly, just, just a matter of seconds. And, and with regard to probation and prosecution, it, it is real time there. As soon as it's saved, it's accessible by probation. Uh, nobody operates inside the time parameter, parameter that we're actually talking about here. I mean, no one's sitting there watching their computer screen refreshing it, <laughs> waiting for a piece of information to come over. So 
That's pretty fast. That is very fast. So when you, you talk about this, it almost instantaneous uh, transfer of information, everything that you need is, is immediately available available before uh, users realize that it is available. What, what are you starting, have you seen a, a big savings in, in time efficiencies or, or costs of paper or how has this process kind of just changed what happens within the city? Well, the city, like any other uh, governmental institution, has been under budget pressure. Um, we've probably been under budget pressure in Spokane since 2006, and we actually had a tight year in 2004. Um, so consequently, um, if you can get something done quickly with a case management system, uh, that it'll, it will allow more work, more effective work to be done with the same people. Uh, so just the savings in time alone is huge. Um, and that time is huge in just about every aspect of prosecuting a case. We don't build paper files nor handle them anymore, so that's a huge savings in time. But if we're talking about being able to transmit a document between offices, we do that electronically. So there's no more, you know, putting the document in the out basket, waiting until somebody comes by and picks it up, and then carrying it over to the other agency and putting it in the in basket and waiting while it's picked up and sorted and distributed. I mean, things are just going zip zip back and forth. So when you start, start taking all the slack out of, you know, this uh, timeline to prosecute a case, things happen much more quickly. Uh, it gets more efficient and, um, and overall just better. And it allows you to do the same job with uh, fewer people. Now, I wouldn't advocate getting a case management system like this to quote, get rid of people. Uh, but I think everyone's got people out there that don't have enough time to do everything that they would really like or need to do. So if you can use a system like this to get rid of all the busy work and save time, that time savings can be moved over to do things that have been left undone or, or not done quite as well. So with the, with the information that you're exchanging, um, has it reduced the number of errors that you have within the case I, I guess you wouldn't call it paperwork anymore, but um, with the case information that you're working with, the people that you're working with, has it cut down on the, the number of errors just simply because it's everything's entered once now instead of three or four or that's, five times? Yeah, that's part of it. Uh, you know, we don't use masking of data extensively, but we do use it in a couple of key areas, like in the police report. We use the 10-digit police report. And if you don't get 10 digits in there, the system isn't going to buy it. And what that does is it, it helps us because in many, many cases, particularly early in the year, we have a lot of leading zeros uh, as we get towards the end of the year, not so much a problem. Uh, but uh, we use uh, masking to reduce the ent entry error rate uh, and some other uh, business rules and that kind of stuff to keep uh, the case you know, on, on track with where it's supposed to be. You know, we can't have an open case if it's that's been adjudicated, so there's business rules that control that sort of stuff. So those errors are reduced, but you still have uh, a human basically putting this information in there. So is it possible to get an error in? Yeah, you bet. But the great thing about the system approach that we have here is that uh, that person's work is going to be reviewed by probably one, if not two or three or four other people uh, as we march down the timeline, and, and they'll catch their errors, uh, our errors for us, or we'll catch their errors for them. Say, hey, this blah, 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 this doesn't look right. Email, they check it out. Oh, yes, yeah, our mistake. They fix it. And so you wind up with a record that is uh, of a much higher level of quality, and uh, the redundancy of looking at the information through multiple agencies drives that error rate down considerably. Very good. Yeah, there are still some frustrations. Um, you know, in the past, uh, for example, our state uh, court rules allow 21 days for discovery. Uh, and before we got just where we were doing that in about 7 to 10 days. Now we send that case over within a minute of uh, the defense counsel being properly added to the case. So those kinds of frustrations are just gone, okay? The frustrations that we have now, 
Well, basically, we've still got people using the system, and certainly the system is not smart enough to know if you entered the wrong code or the wrong date or that sort of thing. So you still have to go back and smoke some of those things out. And then on a system level, there's some frustrations because it's quite complex. And if somebody wants to make a change, okay, we're going to start tracking this this way instead of the way we used to, um, the independence that a given agency might have had just striking out on their own, and that was really never true because you still had to coordinate anything <laughs> that went outside your four walls, uh, it does require a little bit of a coordination. So uh, there are some frustrations when somebody wants to make a real rapid change, just you know, calling a quick huddle and saying, okay, we're going to move this here, move that there, everybody have any questions, you know, okay, fine, and then we do it. Or if there are questions, then maybe the the plan takes an extra day to get implemented. So uh, when people get really, really used to things that are fast, you know, it's just like uh, as computers themselves get faster and faster and faster, people think, you know, golly, this has taken a long time. And <laughs> when that same action 10 years ago, they, they could have got a cup of coffee, you know. Yeah, a couple of seconds now seems like an eternity sometimes. <laughs> so what are your plans for the future when you start? Uh, you, you talked a little bit about municipal court, not yet. Um, what, what, what's the plan for implementing or expanding your case management solution in the city of Spokane? Well, uh, that's sort of a two-parter. Uh, let's take plans for the future first. Uh, our plans for the future are actually now quite near. From the day we went live with Just We're Back in um, 2009, we recognized that not having our court on board caused, you know, the other three agencies to sort of simulate like the court was playing. And that meant that, you know, uh, entering, you know, court dates and all that kind of stuff fell onto the prosecution. Um, we have just recently last year been able to uh, acquire another database, uh, APIs to connect the databases, and uh, the same high-quality hardware to support it to bring our municipal court on board as a, I was going to say a full member of the, uh, the system, but in fact they're not. Just like uh, the court is typically the center of any criminal justice system, our court is going to be the center of our just war system. It's going to require us to do a, a few uh, a minor structural changes, but by and large, um, particularly from like the view of the prosecutors, having somebody else keep track of all the court dates and everything is, is going to be wonderful. And then uh, tied very closely with that is the court wants to be paperless. And this is just huge because two of the other three agencies are paperless. The public defender is not paperless because they, they wanted to maintain a paper file for transportability and being able to take that file out on the hallway and, you know, show their clients, you know, something in the case or something like that. But with, uh, with the prosecution and probation being paperless and the court wanting to go paperless, uh, now there won't be any delay like we currently have in paper orders from the court going through that little paper routine I was talking about earlier. You know, the court will basically issue the order in an electronic PDF kind of form, zip it over to the agencies to which it applies, and we'll be able to react to it uh, very quickly. Um, I, I spoke earlier about our um, discovery uh, being down to just within a few seconds once the defense for the public defenders properly on the case, and those words were chosen carefully because right now when they get appointed to a case, they're appointed by the court and a paper order is sent over and has to be handled and processed and, you know, get them on the case, and that sometimes takes a day. Um, boy, when the court uh, has their system and they're all linked together and the court says, okay, public defender, you're on the case, zip zap, the police report and all the discovery and the case will flow to the public defender immediately and theoretically. Uh, like on an arraignment, uh, the public defender might even be able to resolve that case right in the courtroom uh, on that very first court date. So we're really excited about that. Tied to the plan for the future is we also bought um, a new Don uh, product called Justice Web. And what Justice Web does basically is through reporting out of just where uh, it provides access to the public on a, on a web page such that if, you know, you have a, a pending court date but you can't remember what the heck it was because you lost your paperwork or whatever, you'll be able to go anywhere you can go on the Internet can log on to uh, 
Justice Webb and, and call up the next court date and see when and where it is and with what judge and you know basically uh, anything that they might be able to see by uh, showing up at the at the counter and requesting review of their file. Uh, I mean at the clerk's counter. So uh, we're very excited about that as well. So that's that's sort of our plans for the future. Uh, you asked about whether or not it was easy to expand, I believe. And I, and I sort of have to say compared to what, because <laughs> I've never really done anything like this before. But, uh, but yes, uh, you know, uh, it is easy to expand. And within, just within um, an individual application of Just For Itself, um, we're continuing to expand it and bring in uh, new capabilities. Uh, for instance, we run a what we call a licensing program in the prosecutor's office where people whose licenses are suspended for unpaid tickets can get their uh, fines all bundled up and put on a long-term time pay and get their licenses back. Well, they used to maintain all that information in a separate uh, Microsoft Access database. And within the last year, I've created a, a case type inside uh, our prosecutor's uh, database to allow the licensing unit to basically operate inside JustWare. And by doing that, it gives prosecutors knowledge with regard to whether or not someone's uh, participating in the program. And the licensing people are able to help us keep our name records up to speed and keep current addresses and all that sort of thing. So we've done that with relicensing. We've actually done it with a couple of other innovations that I won't go into in the interest of time. So. Within the system, really, really easy to expand. Um, expanding the system as a whole, um, well, uh, yes, but you have to have someone with deep, deep expertise at the local level to understand what needs to go where, when, and how often. And uh, every once in a while, we'll make some system level change uh, and we always do these things, uh, theoretically, and we, and we always try to do these things in training and then simulate the real world in training to make sure that we haven't, you know, uh, dropped a comma or, you know, failed to dot an I or whatever. Uh, every once in a while when we transfer this over to production and actually get into the real world, we do discover something we, that we had forgotten. But um, it, it just requires uh, a lot more thought to make a change that's going to affect uh, two or three other uh, entities. But it, it's not hard. It's just uh, it's a complex thought process at times. Mm -hmm. Just understanding the underlying process and, and the, maybe possibly the un unintended results if you go ahead and do this without thinking through the full, the exactly. full process yeah. it can, have, yeah. can have some problems. So um, what I meant when, when I was asking about expanding is um, a lot of times people will look at a case management solution and they'll say, well, case management is just to track my cases and maybe my events and, and possibly you know, store my documents. Um, and, and you hit on it just perfectly to talk about it. you can use the information and the processes within, especially if you, if you work with a highly configurable system like what JustWare is, then you can, uh, you can expand that out to other departments like you did, bringing other departments like your licensing in under the same type of workflow and, and being able to realize some of those same savings when you talk about instantaneous transfer of information. But also adding a, an additional uh, access point like through Justice Web and, and through some web access. So you, you don't necessarily have to call. You don't have to walk into the court. You can get that information um, online, which is uh, providing that type of interaction is, is a, a perfect example of an additional way to expand beyond what, what you would normally think of as a, as a core case management solution functionality. So. You know, Marlene, while you were talking, I realized that I overlooked a major uh, area of expansion because I was thinking just with regard to our system, um, with the APIs that we have, uh, we have plans to integrate uh, our system with a state system called SECTOR, and I, I can't remember what the acronym means, but it's basically a Washington State's Electronic Ticketing Initiative. Um, basically, our law enforcement people, um, particularly on the traffic side, take the, the uh, individual's driver's license and their registration back to their police car and wave it under a barcode reader 
and it pulls all of the licensing and vehicle information off of those documents and puts them into this sector system and populates a uh, ticket which is then printed on a on a heat tape printer and, and handed uh, to the recipient of the ticket. Well, all that information is pulled back into the state system and is going to be available for us to be able to connect JustWare to that system by an API and download all of that pro forma information I was telling you about that we're currently typing in one time. Mm -hmm. Our goal for the future is not to even have to type that information. We're just going to pull it right out of the state system and bring it right into JustWare and then uh, review it, you know, for, for quality and, and, and uh, quality and then uh, basically uh, drive on. And so <clears throat> uh, while building a, a case for us in JustWare only takes uh, between two and three minutes, um, we expect to be able to get that down to oh, 10 to 20 percent of that, of that time when we've got um, the system hooked up to sector. And our probation department is actively working plans to interface with the treatment providers in Spokane to download treatment reports and that sort of thing that uh, an agency, treatment agency, would prepare a treatment report on a given individual, go to our access point on the Internet and download uh, an Adobe copy of that treatment report uh, right in to the uh, case file for the uh, particular defendant and of course at the same time alert the probation officer that a report's been filed. So that's another one of our goals and and these are just really sort of short term and, and not too far downrange goals because we have so much work on our plate right now but as we get on top of this, get our court stood up and get connected to the sector we're going to look for other opportunities to be able to communicate and share information with, uh, you know, other criminal justice agencies and uh, members of the public, like these treatment providers, that sort of thing, you know, that's, you know, mm -hmm. properly filtered and sanitized, that sort of thing. Right. And that really is the ultimate goal, and that's, uh, that's the good to hear that you, you're moving towards that. Um, I really appreciate, Jim, uh, your time today and sharing the, the story of what you're doing in Spokane currently and what your future plans are. Sounds like you have a lot of exciting things on your plate, and I hope that we can talk to you sometime in the future about how everything's going. Hmm. Anytime, Marlene. Give me a call. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. So in summary, everything starts with a good foundation. Your case management solution can have an immediate effect on how you do business every day. Um, it can be fully functional on its own. You can be ha comfortable and happy with what you're doing. But as we've talked about today, there are many, many different ways for you to look beyond that core functionality and really expand what you're doing and turn your case management solution um, into something a little bit more grand. And it's not just the case management solution, but it's looking at all of your business processes and how can you make your quarter agency a little bit more grand. I hope we've given you something to think about today. Um, join us in the coming months as we talk more in depth about some of the options for external expansion to your case management solution. We talked about a few of them today. And in the coming months, we're going to really uh, focus in on what some of these options today and I hope that you can join us for a future webinar. I would like to again thank Jim Bledsoe from Spokane City to sharing his story with us today. Now back to you. Great. Thank you Marlene and Jim. That concludes the presentation portion of today's webinar. Um, we would like to continue answering questions if you weren't able to answer ask your questions during the presentation. Um, feel free to enter them into the chat window now. If you would like additional information about how to take your solution to the next level, please contact us at sales at newdon.com. If you have additional questions about today's webinar for either Marlene or Jim, please email Marlene at mmartineau at newdon.com. As I mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, today's Webinar and materials will be available online shortly. Watch your email for direct access to those materials.
Thank you for attending. We hope to see you at next month's webinar about online public portals on April 19th. Registration details will be available soon. See ya.